Hi, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the lesson on infrared radiation. So uh, this lesson fits with GCSE physics, year 10 physics, um, with the energy stores and transfers uh, module right at the beginning of the year 10 um, GCSE physics course. Um, and also, of course, with the combined science physics. So in this lesson, we're going to be learning about how thermal energy is absorbed or emitted from surfaces and how the surface type affects the rate of thermal energy transfer by radiation. And the very first thing that I'd like you to do is to discuss with somebody near you, if you're able, or if you're at home, have a, uh, have a good think about this for yourself, the following questions. Um, the image, uh, images on the right were taken with a thermal imaging camera. Which part of the images are hotter and how do you know this? And why are the parts that you identify as hotter radiating more heat energy? Um, if you're watching a uh, video recording of this, it would be a good idea to pause right now and we'll go through the answers in a minute. Okay. So, which parts of the image are hotter? Well, you can clearly see on the right-hand side of the thermal images there, uh, you can see uh, the, image, the thermal image, image of the dog and you can see a thermometer scale. Um, so down to about, so these are in, uh, these are in Fahrenheit, by the way, uh, it's uh, a, a uh, irritating US uh, temperature scale. Um, but you've got about my uh, about 70 Fahrenheit down in the sort of dark blue uh, up to 94, 95 up to the yellow white at the top of the top image, and then it goes from the sort of the purpley colours up to the red white colours uh, on the bottom image. In both of them, the area that's radiating the most heat is the eyes of the dog, with some being lost from the insides of the ears and also quite a lot from the mouth and the end of the nose. So how do you know this? Well, clearly you can see on the thermal image camera, it's detecting a lot more radiation being uh, emitted from these areas. And that is why it's picking up and, and been rendered in those colors. So you know this because the thermal imaging camera is showing you that there's more radiation from these parts. So, uh, so, so it's a fairly uh, obvious link there with the amount of thermal radiation and the color of the image. But why are they, ident uh, are they radiating more heat energy? Well, the key thing is this, is that the dog is covered in white fluffy fur. So, and we're gonna learn about how the color and type of surface and insulation uh, affects the amount of radiation. But the key thing is, is that, uh, is that the rest of the dog is well insulated, so it doesn't radiate very much, but the eyes and the end of the nose and the mouth and the insides of the ears have, have no or less fur. And so they are radiating more energy. Another thing uh, that's quite interesting is that the eyes of the dog and the uh, nose and the lips, at least, of the dog are black. And that colour is also linked very strongly with the amount of radiation that's being given off. And we'll talk about that later in this lesson. So let's have a look at the uh, outcomes for our lesson. So in this lesson, we're going to be hopefully able to describe what infrared radiation is and where it fits with other waves in what's called the electromagnetic spectrum, which hopefully you've heard of. We'll be then moving on to describing how the temperature of an object affects the amount of infrared radiation it emits and describing how the characteristics of an object's surface affects the amount of infrared radiation it absorbs or emits and how much it reflects. Uh, that's the main body of the lesson and then at the end of the lesson we'll be looking at some challenging work um, that's really only for higher tier GCSE physics students uh, but also quite interesting about explaining how the amount of infrared radiation an object absorbs and emits affects its temperature and why this is important for a lot of uh, applications. Right, so the first thing, we're going to talk about what infrared radiation actually is and uh, in order to do this we need to build on the work of Isaac Newton in 1672 and he was the first person who demonstrated what, um, the, uh, what white light is actually made of. He shone a, a bright white light as you can see there into a, a 60 degree prism and that white light, because it's refracting in the way it is, splits or disperses into the colours of the spectrum, uh, going from red, orange, yellow, green, indigo, uh, sorry, red, yellow, green, blue, indigo and violet. The indigo and violet are a little bit difficult to see. Uh, you can clearly see the blue band and it's wider because that goes into sort of a purpley blue, which is what we call indigo. And then beyond that is a much paler um, lilac blue colour. You can just make it out at the top near the, the prism there. Uh, which is violet. So this was first demonstrated by Isaac Newton in 1672 and this experiment had lots of implications about the nature of what light and colour is and people didn't understand at that time why a rainbow was formed but, but Isaac Newton clearly showed why um, and it's because of the way that the white light of the sun shines through raindrops 
um, and that's why we see it when there's just been some uh, see a rainbow when there's just been some rain because the white light is being dispersed through those raindrops to form the colours of the spectrum. Um, and exactly how that occurs is something that we look at in um, much more detail um, in A-level physics. But there's an important uh, uh, extra element to this, and that is this, is if we place a thermometer, you can see the thermometer there on the left-hand side of the, of the uh, prism image. If we have a thermometer which is designed to detect thermal radiation, so we might paint the bulb of that thermometer a dull black colour, and we'll talk about that in a second as well. You don't detect any change. There's nothing that goes on there. But if we move that thermometer to the other side, if you have a look, you can see the temperature increasing. And that tells us very conclusively that there must be some sort of radiation passing through the prism that, is, that, that transfers thermal energy. The thermal energy has gone up because the thermometer reading has gone up. And this radiation we call infrared radiation. Now, <clears throat> that infrared radiation wasn't there when it was just the white light, or maybe it was, but it was mixed up in the white light beam. Here we can clearly see that something separate to the visible spectrum is causing the temperature to rise, and that's an experiment that we could do in school as well. So the key thing is this, what is infrared radiation? Well, infrared radiation, like visible light, is a wave that is part of a larger group of waves called the electromagnetic spectrum. And we'll learn a lot more about the electromagnetic spectrum in GCSE and also if you choose to take A level we go uh, into that quite a lot. But you can see the, the electromagnetic spectrum there, there's seven main waves, gamma rays, x-rays, ultraviolet, visible light and infrared that we've just spoken about, and microwaves and radio waves. So there's the electromagnetic spectrum, infrared radiation is an electromagnetic wave that transfers thermal energy. So hopefully we can describe what infrared radiation is and where it fits in with other waves in the electromagnetic spectrum. If you're at all confused by what I've just shown you, um, then you could watch the YouTube uh, video. That, um, is, the link is on the board just there on the, on the presentation um, and that will um, clarify it and maybe uh, address that in a slightly different way. So we're now going to move on to looking at temperature and uh, different types of surfaces and how they affect infrared radiation. So first things first, <clears throat> what we have here are two different types of barbecue grill. Um, uh, we've got grill grates just there shown right now and the standard grill on the left hand side. Um, and they're viewed with an infrared camera and there are clear differences. So which are the coolest and which are the hottest parts of the image? Which one would you uh, buy, um, would you prefer to buy? Um, and and what, do, what would cause you to make that decision? So have a little think about that for, for a moment. <clears throat> okay, you can clearly see here that the both uh, both the grills have been switched on, but the grill grates get hotter much more quickly, and the distribution of that radiation is much more even across the entire thing. The standard grill is kind of patchy, you've got hot bits and you've got cooler bits. So if you were cooking on the standard grill, you'd have areas where your sausages will cook nicely and areas where they wouldn't cook, uh, cook so well at all. So clearly the, the, obvious choice, uh, um, the obvious choice for the better grill is the grill grates. How do we know? Because it's hotter and we know that because you can see from the thermal imaging camera you've got the whites and the reds more evenly distributed across the whole of that grill. All right, so, so this is obviously a video that has been produced by the people who make that because they want you to buy it and to be honest I'm sold. Right, so what's the implications of this? Well, the key points that we can get here is this. First, the higher the temperature, the greater the amount of infrared radiation that is emitted. Okay, so you can see that the grill grates get to a higher temperature on there and it will cook better because you've got more radiation being emitted there. Um, and so that's, that's a really important thing. The hotter something is, the more infrared radiation it emits. Uh, the second thing is this, is that an object at constant temperature emits infrared radiation at the same rate as it absorbs it. I'd like you to focus on the grill grates image just there. When it first starts off, it's relatively cool. But what happens is, is because the flames underneath the grill are constantly adding energy, it's absorbing more infrared radiation that it's emitting, and so it gets hotter. But then it gets to a point 
where the grill, uh, the grill itself is so hot that it's emitting as much radiation as, as it's absorbing, at which point it reaches a constant temperature, in this case around about 500 or 550 degrees, and that's more than enough to be cooking your food. Um, the image at the bottom right corner there shows a hot cup of coffee on a very cold, frosty day. It's on a cold, icy table, as you can see there. And you can see the steam rising off the, uh, the top of the coffee cup. What does this show us? Well, it shows us that that cup of coffee is going to cool down. It's going to cool down quite quickly. Well, why is that? Well, you should already know that some energy is going to be lost by conduction and by convection. But most of the energy is lost from that coffee cup because it is radiating more energy than it is absorbing. It's not absorbing very much at all, but it's because it's hot and the environment around it is very, very cold. But what it is doing is it's radiating out into the environment. So it's, uh, uh, it's emitting more than it's absorbing, therefore it cools down. So uh, you can see in the bottom bullet point, if something absorbs more quickly than it emits, it will heat up. If it's the opposite, if it emits more quickly than it absorbs, it will cool down. So let's apply that to a house and some insulation. I'll just put myself down there. Okay, so you've got an infrared rate, uh, image at the top right corner just there. It shows clearly a house and there are hot parts and there are cold parts, or rather there are parts that are emitting a lot of energy uh, radiation and there are parts that are not emitting as much. Uh, what does the image tell you about where that is? What does this tell you about something called the thermal conductivity of the walls compared to the windows or roof? And then if you were making a decision about where to insulate this house, what would you do first? So I'll give you a couple of minutes to think about that or pause the presentation. Okay, so hopefully you can clearly see the red parts of the image are the windows and the uh, peak of the roof and the eaves of the roof there. So, the, uh, so there's far more energy being emitted from the windows and from the peak of the roof than there is from the walls. So this tells us that the thermal conductivity of the walls is lower than the thermal conductivity of the windows. And we'll be talking about thermal conductivity in more detail later um, in, in the next lesson. Um, so if you were gonna insulate this house, the most economic and uh, efficient way to do that would be to, to install double glazing, because you're losing a lot of energy there, and to make sure that you've got good loft insulation all around to make sure that you don't lose energy there. You may or may not want to put wall cavity insulation. It certainly would improve the, uh, uh, the retention of heat energy, but uh, in this case, it's, it's not the, the place where we're losing most energy. So you can see the thermal imaging camera would have a very big impact in the way that you spend your money to make a house more efficient. Now, if we were investigating how and why that occurs, um, a very good way to do that is using something called a Leslie cube. Now a Leslie cube is basically a, a steel box, a hollow steel box with a, um, a, an opening at the top that you can uh, then fill it with hot water. So you pour boiling water into your uh, Leslie cube. Now when you do that, the whole inside, including the inside walls of all of the surfaces are at the same temperature. The same water is distributed through the whole Leslie cube. But, and if you were to then touch the walls of the Leslie cube, the heat would then conduct, conduct through each of those uh, walls at the same rate and you would burn your hands wherever you, wherever you held it. However, if you held your hands on different sides, you would, uh, but not touching, but close to different sides, you would feel a very definite difference. So if we put an infrared thermometer on either side, you can see that if it was facing the black side, we would get something like 67 degrees, um, whereas on the white side, it would be 42 degrees. Well, why is that? Well, the different uh, readings are obtained here because uh, heat is clearly being radiated or emitted from the black, dull, dark side much more efficiently than it is from the white, shiny side. So this tells us that dull, dark surfaces are good emitters and absorbers of infrared radiation, whereas light, shiny surfaces are very poor emitters and absorbers of infrared radiation. The, on the other hand, white shiny surfaces are very good reflectors of infrared radiation and uh, dull dark surfaces, as we've said, will absorb rather than, if, than reflect. And you can see the same uh, uh, thermal camera of the Leslie cube just there with the uh, black um, sides being radiating far more energy than the uh, light shiny side. 
Now, this is actually a required practical that we will cover in um, a lot of detail in the uh, when we do the electromagnetic spectrum in year 11. So more on that then. But it's very useful for you to know about the different uh, colours of the surfaces and whether they're good emitters or absorbers of infrared radiation. Now we'll look at how that's going to be applied. So if you were a builder and you're installing loft insulation, why would you choose something with a silver surface on both sides? And why is the emergency blanket on the right hand side there silver? I'll give you a couple of minutes to think hard about that. But here's a little hint. We've just been speaking about the Leslie cube um, and it shows us that silver surfaces are poor emitters and absorbers of radiation, but they're also very good reflectors. So if you're watching this remotely, it would be a good idea to pause uh, the presentation, maybe write down a couple of sentences about why you think those silver surfaces are useful. Okay, so we've just seen that silver surfaces are poor emitters and absorbers of radiation. So the silver surface on the inside or the warm side of the insulation is important. Um, and there's obviously the inside of the blanket is also silvered. And the reason this is that it prevents thermal energy transfer because it reflects the infrared radiation back into the house. So the infrared radiation is being reflected back into the house or back into the person's body by the silver surface. So that prevents that, that energy being lost. The outside surface, which is on the cooler side, is silver, which is a poor emitter. So that means that even if the surface becomes warmer, which it will after a period of time, um, it doesn't emit the infrared radiation very well, but will keep it, uh, re retain that energy. So therefore the outside surface prevents thermal transfer because it's a poor emitter of thermal radiation. So, so these are, uh, 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 the, the, these ideas are quite important for the way, the way that we use them here for insulation and also for something like a thermal blanket, as you can see on the right hand side there. Okay, so thinking about the, our outcomes here, hopefully um, the slides have helped you want to be able to describe how the temperature of an object affects the amount of infrared radiation it emits. And hopefully you can describe how the characteristics of an object surface affects the amount of infrared radiation it absorbs from its or how much it reflects. Again, like, in the other, uh, like for the previous learning outcome, if you've not understood that, the BBC uh, bite size uh, revision slide that I've uh, put a URL link there um, on the uh, page is very, very good and it will take you through those key ideas in a slightly different way and that may well help you. Okay, so, uh, so summarizing our key learning from the lesson so far. So first thing, infrared radiation is part of a continuous group of waves called the electromagnetic spectrum. And there you see infrared at the top there, um, next to visible light between visible and microwaves, part of a wider spectrum. The second thing, the higher the temperature uh, of an object, the greater the amount and intensity of the radiation it emits. So you can see the red hot poker there clearly, the red hot end is, is, uh, is much hotter than the uh, dark end, which is cooler. And you can see that it's emitting a, great, a, a much higher intensity of radiation. Dull black objects or surfaces are very good absorbers and emitters of infrared radiation and very poor reflectors of infrared radiation. And finally, if an object absorbs more radiation than it emits, the temperature increases. And conversely, if it emits more radiation than it absorbs, its temperature decreases. If the, if the absorption and the emission is the same, the temperature will be constant. It won't change temperature at all. So four key points, hopefully you've taken those on board. Um, and or please do have a look at the wider reading and maybe read the textbook that you should have access to um, uh, on, the, uh, on this topic. So, on the, on the board here, we have some questions. Um, if you're doing this remotely, you will be able to download this as an, insi as an assignment. Uh, what I would like you to do is to, answer, to write your answers onto this by hand and, uh, and then uh, um, upload it onto Google Classroom and share it with me or whoever your teacher may be. And, uh, and hopefully we'll be able to give you some feedback for that. Um, but the uh, questions that are on the page here, questions one, two, and three, link directly to the, um, uh, to the work that we've just been doing. 
and most of you should be able to uh, to answer most of these um, that will be in the core content foundation and higher tier so uh, um, and also in the triple physics so you need to be able to answer these questions the next slide shows the challenge question and really uh, this is this is uh, the higher end and uh, and really only GCSE physics. So if you're going to have a look at it, a crack at this question, you'll need to have a little look at the final couple of slides of the presentation. If you're doing combined science, um, then you don't need to do that, um, but you may find it interesting, particularly if you might be thinking of taking A level um, uh, at the end of year 11. Okay, so the next thing that we need to th uh, think about is something called black body radiation. And what is black body radiation? Now, the easiest way to do this is to think about a, a hypothetical model. So what we've got here is, uh, um, is a sphere. It's a, it's a ball um, and it's got two skins, the inside skin and the outside skin, and they're separated, as you can see here, by a, a hollow vacuum. So it's a double walled hollow metal sphere. There's a small hole that we're gonna pass radiation into, and the inside surfaces is, uh, surface there is painted with a matte dull black um, uh, uh, paint. So that will make it a very good absorber. The, there's a very shiny silver surface on the outside, which is a good reflector and a very poor emitter of heat. And, um, uh, and if you've done work about conduction and convection already, which you should have done, the fact that it's a vacuum inside the double um, walled sphere will mean that it's a very poor conductor of heat as well, conductor and convector. So what, what's going on here? Well. When radiation enters the sphere, it's partially absorbed each time it reflects off the inside surface. So here's the radiation, and you can see it bouncing off the wall, but its intensity is reducing each time because it's losing energy. Its energy is being absorbed each time it touches that surface. Now this is important. The energy of the incident radiation is being absorbed each time it touches the surface, but because there's a vacuum there, that energy that's touching the, that's being absorbed by the inside surface is not being transmitted to the outside. There's a vacuum there. It's that there's, uh, there's no conduction of energy out. There's no uh, convection of energy out. There's no radiation of energy out because the inside is a vacuum and the outside shiny silver surface is, 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 uh, uh, is, is a poor emitter. So what we're saying is no other radiation is absorbed. No energy is lost. And this is important all of the energy is absorbed by this by this uh, object and when all the energy that goes falls onto it is absorbed we say that it is a black body okay so a black body ra radiator or a black body absorber is something that absorbs all of the radiation that it uh, that falls on it nothing is reflected nothing is transmitted away from it now what is the purpose of this well this links to, uh, to actually to A-level quantum physics, um, if you're interested in that, and certainly we spend a bit of time talking about that in A-level, um, but uh, it's also linked to global warming, which has links to chemistry as well. So this black body radiation is important. So the first thing is a key definition. A black body in physics is an idealized object that will absorb and emit the full spectrum of radiation that falls on it. None is reflected and none is transmitted. Now that definition is gonna be important for you to remember. Now, what does that mean? So the sun and stars are considered to be black bodies because they emit a very nearly continuous spectrum as shown. Now, what you can see here on the graph is you've got different radiation. You've got part of the electromagnetic spectrum there, ultraviolet, visible, and infrared. And you can see the temperature for the different lines. We've got a 3000 Kelvin. 3000 Kelvin is about 3270 degrees C. Uh, so 4,000, 5,000, 6,000. Kelvin is just another way to measure temperature um, that we use in physics, but really it's like measuring temperature in Fahrenheit. Um, but, uh, but, but a difference of one degree Kelvin is the same as one degree C. So, uh, so it's an easy way to understand that. So 3000 Kelvin is pretty hot. But you can see that that hot object there is, uh, is emitting most of its energy in this section here between one and one and a half micrometers wavelength. And that is in the infrared band. So this object at 3000 Kelvin will be absorbing and emitting radiation at, uh, um, in the infrared spectrum. And that it might be glowing red, but it'll be quite faint. If we increase it by a thousand uh, degrees, you can see that, that that peak has shifted to the left-hand side. It's gonna be emitting much more light, 
but still a lot of infrared radiation because there's a greater area there. Now this object will be glowing brighter. You can see the full spectrum, so it'll look, it'll look lighter, but the majority of it is in the red, orange, and yellow spectrum. So this is still gonna look a reddy orange color, but it's gonna be brighter. As we increase the temperature further to 5,000 degrees, just there, you can see the line for 5,000 degrees, the peak is now moving to the visible spectrum. So this is going to be really emitting a lot of light and it's gonna be a whiter color because you've got more of the blue end of the spectrum in there. And if we increase by 1,000 degrees again to 6,000 Kelvin, you can see that you've got a peak right in the middle of the visible spectrum. Um, so it's gonna be emitting a lot of white. We are now white hot. Now it's still emitting a huge amount of thermal infrared radiation because the area in that um, for, for the infrared section is still very, very large. So it's emitting a huge amount of radiation there. And this is a distribution that you might see for a star or for any other sort of uh, object that could be considered to be a black body. Now, why is this important? Well, it shows us a few things. It shows that the higher the temperature, the greater the amount of infrared radiation it emits, and also the shorter the wavelength of the peak intensity of light it emits. So this is uh, quite important because if we're talking about black body radiation, you may see a graph like this and you may be asked to uh, interpret what it's showing us or use data from it to explain the amount of infrared radiation and how brightly it's uh, emitting visible light as well, or the intensity. Well, how does this all link to uh, global warming then? Well, you can see the same graph just there. You've got the same distribution, but this is the uh, radiation that is emitted by the sun. You can see that we've got the perfect spectrum as shown by the gray line just there. And the sun's distribution of, of waves is very much the same. It follows that same pattern. And so the radiation that reaches the top of our atmosphere is, is uh, shown by the, the yellow shaded area. But by the time that radiation passes through our whole atmosphere, you can see that it becomes the red line and a lot of the radiation has been absorbed, but specific wavelengths have also been absorbed. So it shows how some wavelengths from the sun are absorbed by the atmosphere and others not. And now this is very important because you wouldn't want um, all of the UV or even more intense waves to be passing through our atmosphere. And luckily our atmosphere absorbs that. And if our atmosphere was burned off, then, uh, then all the gamma, and x-rays and, uh, and ultraviolet from the sun would hit our surface and we would literally be baked. Um, but other areas are also being absorbed. Now this is really quite important. It's important for global warming because a body at constant temperature emits infrared radiation at the same rate as, at which it absorbs it. So the earth, we want the earth to be at a more or less constant temperature. Now this is gonna be really important because there's the sun's energy the energy that is reaching the earth's surface is shown by the red area on the graph just there and we know that uh, the amount of radiation we absorb in it needs to be in balance if we don't want to get warmer overall so this is what happens the sun's radiation contains an almost continuous range of all wavelengths the radiation that isn't absorbed by uh, by the atmosphere uh, um, is then reflected back into space and that's what happens all the time but here's the big problem. Some of the sun's radiation is absorbed, then re-emitted at a longer wavelength. And the reason that happens is because of quantum physics. But uh, you don't really need to know that for GCSE. All you need to know is that the area that I've shown on the left there, this, in the circle on the left, the energy that, is uh, that, that reaches the surface is absorbed and then re-emitted at a longer wavelength. But when it's re-emitted at a longer wavelength, all this energy that hadn't been absorbed before is now in the region that is absorbed by carbon dioxide. Now that's a big problem because we've, we're putting more and more carbon dioxide and greenhouse gases into our atmosphere. And the carbon dioxide reabsorbs this longer wavelength of infrared radiation. That radiation would have normally gone back out into space, but now it's being reabsorbed. So all of a sudden we're absorbing more radiation than we're emitting. And because of the increasing amount of greenhouse gas in the atmosphere, infrared radiation is being absorbed at a greater rate. And so the global temperature rises and this is what global warming is. So, uh, so to understand how this occurs, what you need to be able to do is you need to be able to understand what a black body is, i.e. a star, whether it's absorbing all the, the radiation or not. And, if, and what happens to the temperature of an object when we absorb more than we emit 
or if we admit, emit more than we absorb, we'd get cooler. So a body at constant temperature emits infrared radiation at the same rate at which it absorbs it. Now, the final thing here is a free science lessons video clip. I'm gonna play it for you because he summarizes black body radiation very well in that, and it's a nice summary of what we've just done. Hi, welcome back to freesciencelessons.co.uk. By the end of this video, you should be able to describe what's meant by black body radiation. You should then be able to describe how the temperature of an object depends on the balance between radiation absorbed and radiation emitted. And this is for triple physics students only. In a previous video, we looked at how infrared radiation is absorbed and emitted from different surfaces. We saw that matte black surfaces are the best absorbers and the best emitters of infrared radiation. Now you need to understand that all objects, no matter what temperature, emit and absorb infrared radiation. However, a hotter object will emit more infrared radiation in a given time compared with a cooler object. Now I'm showing you here a piece of hot metal and this brings us to a key fact. Both the wavelength and the intensity of radiation depend on the temperature of the object. Very hot objects emit shorter wavelength radiation than cooler objects, and we can see that with this graph. As the object gets hotter, it emits more short wavelength radiation, and that's why very hot objects produce visible light, for example a piece of very hot metal. The intensity of the radiation also increases at higher temperatures. Okay, we're going to look now at the idea of black body radiation. A perfect black body absorbs the radiation instant on it. No radiation is reflected and no radiation is transmitted, in other words, passed through. Remember that an object that absorbs radiation well will also emit radiation well. So that means that a perfect black body is also the best possible emitter of radiation. Now, if an object is warm in its surroundings, then it will emit more radiation than it absorbs, and its temperature will increase. A good example is it for hot coffee. If an object is cooler than its surroundings, then it will absorb more radiation than it emits, and this will cause its temperature to increase. A good example are these burgers on a barbecue. And if an object is at a constant temperature, then it's absorbing radiation at the same rate as it's emitting radiation. Okay, we're going to finish now by looking at how radiation affects the temperature of the Earth. Remember that absorbing or emitting radiation are the only ways that the Earth can gain or lose energy. The Sun emits short wavelength radiation, such as visible light and ultraviolet. This radiation travels to the Earth. Some of that radiation is simply reflected, for example, by clouds. The remaining radiation can then be absorbed by the surface of the Earth. This causes the temperature of the Earth to increase, and the Earth now emits infrared radiation back into space. However, some of the heat is trapped by greenhouse gases in the atmosphere, for example, carbon dioxide. Now, human activity is increasing the levels of greenhouse gases, and this means that more heat energy is trapped in the atmosphere, and less is radiated into space. I should point out that many factors can affect how much energy is radiated from the Earth, for example, the amount of cloud cover. Cloudy nights tend to be warmer than clear nights. That's because clouds can reflect infrared back to the Earth and prevent it from being radiated into space. Remember, you'll find plenty of questions on how radiation is emitted and absorbed in my vision workbook. You can get that by clicking on the link above. Okay, so that really uh, finishes off uh, the, the lesson um, for everybody. Uh, Hopefully we can describe what infrared radiation is and where it fits within the waves in the electromagnetic spectrum. Hopefully we can describe how the temperature of an object affects the amount of infrared radiation it emits, how the characteristics of a surface affects the amount of infrared radiation it absorbs or emits or how much it reflects. And finally, if you're higher tier um, or physics, I hope that you can explain where the, uh, how the amount of infrared radiation an object absorbs and emits affects its temperature and why this is important. Um, there are two further links at the bottom there which will help you with the more challenging aspects of this lesson, hopefully. But don't forget that I would like you to, uh, uh, to download and complete the, uh, the, the exam questions and then resubmit those by taking a picture of your work. What you could also do is you could type directly onto, the, uh, onto your copy of the document if you wish. 
uh, and that also uh, um, can then be resubmitted either way. Um, good luck and I will uh, see you next lesson.